Okay, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is, well, we're actually going to do a couple of examples, but before that, I just want to talk to you about these logical equivalences and logical implications for quantified statements in one variable. So I'm just not, I'm just going to go through this briefly. Now, what I want you to know is that this is not exactly important and you shouldn't really memorize this to begin with. So for a prescribed universe and any open statements px, qx, and the variable x, we have all these rules. Uh, for example, ex, px, and qx Im logically implies ex, px, and ex, qx. ex, px, or qx is by conditional to ex, px, or ex, qx. And here are some rules for negating statements with one quantifier. Now, uh, this is not something that you should really keep to heart. I've never really found the need to remember it by rem remember it or use it, but maybe it was because that I was pretty good at, th at this part of, of discrete mathematics, such that uh, I did pretty well in it without remembering much about it. I know that seems awkward, but uh, it worked for me. So, here are some rules for negating statements with one quantifier. This is something important that you need to know actually. When we negate ax, px, you can actually, um, that is actually biconditional or logical equivalent to ex negated px. And when we negate ex, px, that is actually logical equivalent to uh, ax negated px. Now, similarly, if we have negated ax, negated px, that is logical equivalent to uh, ex double negated px, which is uh, logical equivalent to ex px. And we have the same deal for negated ex, where we get a negated a, a negate, double negated px, which is equal to ax px. So I suppose in your cases, what you really need to remember or what you should write down would be this the rules for negating statements with one quantifier now for sure that will definitely appear in one of your homework or your tests because i can't imagine uh, doing discrete mathematics without knowing it well that's just a little uh, word of wisdom for you or to keep in mind or to keep by your side these rules for negating statements with one quantifier Okay, so now we are going to go through an example with the negations. Now, we will find negation of two statements in the, uni in the universe that we're talking about will comprise of all the integers. So, let's begin with the negation of our first statement. Let's let px and qx be defined by px being odd and qx being even. Uh, we have px represented by x is odd and qx represented by x squared minus 1 is even. So, the statement, if x squared is odd and x uh, x or uh, yeah if x squared is odd then x squared minus 1 is even that can simply be symbolized as for all x's px implies qx and that is in fact a true statement so far so good so we're going to negate this statement so what we did here is i put a negation symbol in front of that whole statement and using that the rules that we've just learned in, in the previous page we know that negated ax is equal to ex negated ax equals ex so that's where we got that and in addition, we negated negated ax, and we also give us a negated negation inside uh, inside the uh, inside these these two square brackets because in the rules it states that negated ax px is logic equivalent to ex negated px. Well, we're just replacing p negated px by negated px implies qx. And as we know, if we uh, we can manipulate this Im implication symbol to have a negated px or qx, that is logic equivalent, and that is how I went from this step to that step. Now, if we expand it in the the negation symbol here into the brackets, we get double negation, double negated px and negated qx that is logic equivalent to ex 
px and negated qx. The double negation cancels out to get px. And that is how we negated our statement, our first statement of if x squared is odd, then x squared minus 1 is even. And this negation, uh, what it says is there exists an integer x such that x is odd, because that's our statement, and x squared minus 1 is not even. And this statement here is false because it's totally kind of the opposite of what we have in the first statement, which is true. Uh, there exists an integer x such that x is odd, and x squared minus 1 is not even. If you try with any, uh, any odd integer, so for example 3, if we took 3, well 3 is odd, but then if we squared 3, that will, get, that will give us 9, but minus 1, that's 8, and that is even. So if you go through the, those kind of numbers, you could try it if you want, but I really think that is useless. And what I really wanted to show you here is that the statement here is false. But if you could try it, you could try it if you want. I'm going to go on to the next, uh, the next negation that we're going to do. So let Rx and Sx be open statements. And Rx would be 2x plus 1 equals 5. Sx is x squared equals 9. So the quantified statement Ex, Rx, and Sx is false. Because it asserts that there is an integer such that 2x plus 1 equals 5. And a squared equals 9. Well, the only way we could get... 2, 2a plus 1 equals 5 is when a equals 2, and when we to get a squared equals 9, we that only work if we have a uh, plus or minus 3. So there exists uh, an, an x that will give us 2x plus 1 equals 5, x squared equals 9. We know right away that this statement is false. I think we already did this in one of my past videos, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure we did. So not going to go into too much details here, but if we do the negation that we're going to do, negated ex, rx, and sx, we know that the negated ex will give us ax. Also, don't forget the negation symbol that goes inside the brackets. And once we have that, we can expand our uh, negated symbols into our, into our brackets, so we get negated rx or negated sx, and don't forget uh, the ax uh, quantifier but that comes before the negated rx or negated sx and this negation is true and what it says is for every integer x 2x there for every integer x 2x plus 1 does not equal 5 or x squared uh, does not equal 9. The difference here is that well, this is a true statement because uh, there totally fits the bill of saying that there is no x such that it makes this statement true and this statement true at the same time. But there are integers such that it can make either this, uh, either rx true or either sx true. Or I, I should say negated rx true or negated sx true. But that's the end of this example. In the next video, we have a quiz. I'm going to just show this to you here if you want to try it before we go through it. But, uh, oh yeah, and this quiz continues, actually. But that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.